Hello guys, today we are going to talk about Kansas Dustin and Win Live on cassette. Um, this is definitely more of a hidden album, as you'll see in a little bit. Um, so, basically, on Wikipedia, so this thing, the original, original album was King Biscuit Flower Hour Presents Kansas, but the concert was released on the album Dust in the Wind, but it had a different order of tracks. And we're talking about the vinyl version. Um, we'll get to that more in a little bit. Um, so people who've played on it include Steve Walsh, who did vocals and keyboards, Steve Morse, who did guitar, Rich Williams, who did guitar, Greg Robert did additional keyboards, Billy Greer played bass and Phil e -heart did drums, um, and the producer, who, uh, oh, it was released in the live album, was released in, well, on here, it says 92 by Wet Pennies and 97 by EMI Capital Music, so, yeah, it's kind of weird. Like, there's a lot of misinformation here. The original original was recorded in 89, but it wasn't released till 98. It's about the tip, the, it's technically 65 minutes, 54 seconds long. The Dust and the Wind live album just had remixed track, uh, like, the tracks were in a different order. Producers were Kevin T. Kane and Steven Ship for that. For the other one, um... Yeah, there's, this is tough. There's not a lot to work with in this thing in terms of research here. Um, Cause here's the thing. Apparently this vinyl version, it had 12 tracks. The CD had 10 tracks and the cassette one I had had eight. So even though it's the same thing, the same thing was, was the same concept from a different album be released under a different thing and each version of it has different amount of tracks it's kind of crazy <laughs> but yeah I I'm not quite sure how long this version is um, and producer I know who produced it but I don't it seems like there's not any background information on them so we're gonna skip that length We'll have to see here. Um, so on all music, though, th this is probably the lowest rating thing I've ever reviewed. This one only has one and a half stars by critics, and users gave it two and a half stars with two. Two people. <laughs> only two people bothered to review this thing. Um, yeah, this is based on the CD version, though. It looks like the CD version is 5902. If you take away, if you take away the last two tracks of this, because everything else is in order besides the two tracks. I guess the two tracks were cut for the cassette, which is weird. It's 10 minutes, 10 and a half minutes, with those two. So it'd be like 4832 roughly would be the length of the cassette. The CD version is 5902. If you take away 10 minutes 30 seconds, it's it's about like 49, 48.32, pretty much. So that's pretty much how long it is. Um, but yeah, there is an awareness of the cassette version. I did make sure of that. Um, but yeah, I guess the only thing I couldn't find was what other stuff the producers did. But yeah, this is weird because Wikipedia says this came out in 01. But on here it says 92, 97. So it's probably talking about the music that came this, but this itself didn't come out then. And speaking of which, let's, let's look a little closer at this. There's not a lot in here. It's just the cover and the track list, that's it. There's not even a, like a lyric sheet or anything. It's very bare bones. And I think the biggest reason why this thing doesn't get a lot of talk about is because it's one of those kind of like, I call it the, a family dollar album. 
it's an album from a great band that has their all their hit tracks but no one knows about it no one talks about it because it was released either during time where there's a lot of chaos and they just got lost in the shuffle or it was after a time where nobody gave a fuck and nobody bothered so and it's a shame because to be honest i don't think it's that bad of a record i mean does it does it sound past their prime not really it's a live record so it's gonna be a little more on the rough end and the timing might not be perfect or polished in terms of specifically the vocals sometimes in live music in general the vocals kind of take a different spirit than the album which is fine same thing with the music to a degree but more so with the vocals and it's kind of the case here but i don't mind it but about each track individual i have to say the music on this track, I actually like the the way they perform on this better than the studio versions. And I'm gonna say this, I, I'm I'm not I'm not really into Kansas. I only know three other songs: Point of No Return, Carry On, Wayward Son, and Dust and Wind. All three of them are on this. This is actually a very good one to give you an introduction to Kansas without going full on in depth. And to be honest, I think they sound excellent here. Like music wise, they sound great. The guitars are fantastic. I'm getting too ahead of myself here, so let's talk. Go. Point of No Return, that one has a little organ, little crazy little organ riff, and it's catchy. That one's really well done. Sus and the Wind is great, too. Um, that reminds me, they didn't credit a violin violinist. No, um, they did not. I mean, they have a another guy as guitar but to be honest you want yeah it's weird maybe one of them played violin in some songs and one didn't but i have to say combining the guitar the organ slash key organ keyboards or whatever it's probably it was more keyboards and guitar combining all of them in this because you can hear the violin i know there's violin in this combine all three of them it produces such a heavenly awesome sound it is epic and you can hear it in throughout the album in various degrees. But Dustin and the Wind's great on this. It's a fantastic rendition. Lonely Street is a, a nice, good bluesy, but it it's elevated to more of a, mo, a more of a typical hard rock thing, and it, it sounds really good. Song for America, there's it has a long instrumental beginning, but it's so well done. It has great use of of the music and it's it's cat it's catchy rhythm so vocals did do come in and yeah Ooh, awesome rendition carry on where we're and then that's side one the songs are a little longer on this so, so. here on wayward song so, son i actually like this better on live to be honest and i love i love the guitars go super cool like the guitars are doing stuff in this record it's kind of like the Queen 2 album where you hear the where I hear guitars do stuff that wouldn't become super prominent to like modern rock. And I love hearing it here because it just shows like how much they did back then to usher in new rock. How many tricks were actually I always love it when history shows that all oh, that stuff you thought was new it wasn't new. We already did it. <laughs> but yeah, it but there's some stuff throughout the album that has that. Uh, Hold On, that is an excellent song. Kind of more on the ballad side, but not too much. And there's a moment in it where it really gets really, really... Where the violin, the keyboard slash organ and guitar, it really carries it. To, it feels like you're being elevated to the next realm. It's pretty cool. And I think there other songs have those moments too on here. Miracles Out of Nowhere, man, that has quite a few. That one, that one is really a trip, for sure. Um, really, really gets going. And then the wall, the walls, the wall is kind of interesting because you you see the title like oh it's going to be like because sometimes songs when songs get named a certain way you think oh it's going to be like this other popular song. This one isn't. This one is really really good what i like about kansas is the lyrics the lyrics are very potent there's not they're not cliche by any stretch they they tell a good story a cool epic story they borderline kind of metal and stuff it's kind of like led zeppelin when everyone like for example the debate where everyone's like oh which founded rock led zeppelin or black sabbath well someone who barely listened to music would probably say black sabbath but if you really listen to led zeppelin 
they have a lot of ingredients that screams metal. This is, it's kind of like Kansas. Like, if you just glance through it, you can't, this ain't metal. But if you really listen to their music, you really listen, you can hear it. And I can, I feel it with this. But yeah. But yeah. It's, but yeah, no song sounds the same in this. They all stand out in their own way. I mean, it's better to hear it when you, with multiple listings, like I said before. But this one, this thing's, I would dare call it a hidden gem to a degree. Uh, critics argued that it came out way past their prime. And they felt like you could hear that they were kind of done. When I hear this, to be honest, the only thing that, everything sounded great. Now, you could argue that studio tampering. But to be honest, music's music at the end of the day. And, and yeah, it's just, oh, the musicianship's awesome in this. And it has the it has a good amount of tracks to get you introduced to the group, what they're popular for, and some hidden gems to get you invested. It's a great intro to them. Now, would I recommend the cassette version? No. <laughs> I recommend vinyl or CD because there's more tracks and, you know, vinyl is in as retro and CD, of course, is the technology to use for music. Of course, you can look it up on YouTube as well. There's That's really all to say about it. I, I like the album a lot. I, 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 I do recommend it. I don't think it's bad. To be honest, I think I think a lot of it, a lot of the, the, the little to no talk about it's just simply because it came out so late in their career where, they're, where they were almost done. You know, I mean, I think they're still around. Some members left. Some, I think one or two maybe passed away. I don't know. Um, I don't know a ton about their background, but I have to say that they released quite a few albums and they were kind of big a little longer than you might think in terms of charting. But. Yeah, this is a really solid album. Um, the it's in, in a lot of ways when I listen to this, it kind of reminded me of Kiss because Kiss struggled getting studios their studio albums to represent how they sounded live because they always sounded better live than in studio, even though their studio work isn't terrible by any stretch. It's good. Um, kind of same way with Kansas. You listen to their studio stuff and it sounds good. There's nothing bad about it. But when I hear them live here. Like, I literally feel the music roar to life. Like, all the songs on here, they feel like they, they got balls when you listen to them live. When you listen to the studio, they still sound great. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you listen to them live, you can hear, you can feel, like, the power and the elevation. And, and it could be with the studio mixing as well. But, still, it's a really good album. The music, the music, like... It, overall, it's just fantastic. I mean, granted, the album layout design's pretty meh. It, 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 you can tell they were just they just threw this together to make a quick buck, you know. But I still love. It. I think it's a fantastic album, and overall, I recommend it. Kansas, Dust in the Wind, live, <laughs> right there. Um, but yeah, I you can find it on CD. You can probably find it on vinyl as well. YouTube too. I don't cassettes fine. It sounded great on cassette, but I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't recommend it on cassette just because of the tech. It's kind of meh. I mean that and that the uh, cassette use cassette the value of the cassette tech well is a topic for another day. But yeah, I'm gonna do one more of these. I'm gonna take a break. Uh, Mike D. Food Reviews is going to come back, and that's going to be kind of a scheduled thing. Um, and when I, after that, I'm probably going to do fun recommends for a little bit. And I might actually come back and do more of these towards the end of the year. I'm not quite sure. I might, I'm, there's always a temptation to do, um, off, uh, uh, a vlog series, but... But I'm not there yet for that. I'm probably... I'm just going to chill, focus on other things. And But yeah, I, I'm going to try to do more of these later this year. Hopefully. Um, probably more towards fall into winter, I'd say, is when to ask me. It sounds like a long ways off, but with so much content we're doing on the channel. And if you guys want to see more of these in general, or you have recommendations, let me know. And speaking of which... 
thanks for watching guys uh, in case you want to chat with me mike or anyone else at the camping company and you don't want to use the youtube comment section we do have a couple options the first one is we have a discord channel you can find a link to that in the about page slash about section of our channel we also have a discussion tab in our channel as well you can access that through a pc or laptop computer but yeah guys thanks for watching please subscribe and like the videos and have a good day